Bible with me, please, to the book of Genesis. Uh, I think you know where you can find that. Uh, but Genesis chapter 2, and I'm going to be reading, first of all, verses, one, or verses 18 through 24. And then we've got some other things to say. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. That, that doesn't mean just help eat either, but help meet. In other words, a, a helper fit for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So um, what a great feat that was. What a marvelous mind he must have had. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But, Adam, but for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, wow! No, 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 he didn't. I'm sorry. He just, <clears throat> and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and the wife, and they were not ashamed. Well, Pastor Mike asked me if I would fill in for him today, and I decided to address something a little bit different. First, I thought, well, Lauren, I want to talk about the Jews. I, I love to talk about Israel. Then I thought, no. Well, maybe I, should, maybe I should talk about the near coming of Christ. I believe that Jesus is the next major event on God's calendar of time, his return for his saints. I said, no. So anyway, however, I, I looked at the calendar and found out that next Saturday is my anniversary. And I thought, well, I think, I think I'm going to talk about marriage. I think I'm going to talk about family. I met my wife in church, and actually I, I met her on the same day that I got saved, November 16th, 1952, at oh, this time of the day. Um, and it, it was great. Uh, we didn't start dating until three years later when I got back from Korea. Uh, we dated for about seven, eight months and fell in love. And I remember when I proposed to Intha. I said, I, I say I was a Marine at the time, and I love you, honey. And I wish I could give you all the things my friend Benny has. Boats, sports cars, airplane. But honey, I, I really do love you. She says, I love you too, but please tell me more about Benny. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, I've, I've always loved to joke, and, and sometimes it gets me into trouble. Uh, uh, the girl that introduced me to Intha was a very dear friend. I met her in high school. I was a senior in high school. And uh, I met her in class and, and sat next to her on the school bus. And she had all of her things on her lap, her school books. And right on top, she had her Bible. And I thought, it's the strangest thing I've ever seen, you know. And she said, uh, let me ask you this. Do you, uh, would you like to go to our Sunday school class? Uh, yeah, I know you're from New York, and here we are a long way from... She said, would you like to go to Sunday school class? And I thought, Sunday school? Woo, that's for squares. I, I, I said, do, 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 they have, do they have a church service? She said, yes. 
I said, well, I'll go to that, and, and I did. Well, she was the one who introduced me to Intha on the very day that I got saved. In fact, folks thought that she was a, she was a very dear friend um, because she was the one that gave me opportunity to be saved. Took me to church, and man, I heard things I never heard before. And I, I thought, Lord, if you did this for me, who you got the rest of my life? Been a long time now, but well, one time I was joking, and you know, she was a very good friend. People thought that I might marry her. Her name was Gwen, and so I was having a little joke, and sometimes they get me in trouble. You ever get in trouble joking to somebody? I mean, just anyway, I got down on one knee, and and uh, I held her hand, and I, I said, I, I've been wanting to ask you this very important question. And she said, she, and she was kind of nervous, you know. She was, and so I, I guess I was nervous too. But um, I said, does the chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? She didn't think it was funny. <laughs> so in fact, my, my shin still hurts you know, from that one. Well, <laughs> there is no su substitute for really falling in love. I had to come all the way from New York to California to find the girl that I wanted to fall in love with and marry. The girls in New York seemed to be, uh, well, they, they were lacking something. I don't know what it was. In fact, we had a, we had a beauty contest one time and nobody won. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could say some more things too, but the, the girls were all into poetry. Uh, uh, one girl prayed, Lord, I know how much, I, you know how much I love you. And, now help me if you can. I'll hang these trousers on the foot of my bed. Please fill them with a man. <laughs> well, it didn't work, I guess. Wait a minute. Did you understand what I said? <laughs> Someone said, uh, love is, uh, it goes this way. Love is a, is a tickling around the heart that cannot really be scratched. If you have never felt that way, then someday you will. God has a partner for you, and God has a partner for you. And it's wonderful to know that you can fall in love. After I got saved, I, I desired to, to date someone who had a real love for Jesus like I had. And uh, so I, my, my love life changed, <laughs> my dating life changed completely. Love is a gift of yourself to someone else for their enjoyment until that gift becomes sharing. When we, when we first started dating, uh, we had prayer every time we, and if we found out, actually, we were praying, and, and she would pray for me. I was still in the Marines down at Camp Pendleton, California, and uh, and she would pray that, Lord, bless Cass as he goes there, and, and, and I would say, Lord, bless Anthes. She she works, boy, she's making money, boy, who, who? No, <laughs> not very much, but but uh, we, we had prayer every every time. And uh, after, I, after I got saved, I wanted somebody who loved the Lord. Did you know that God teaches that love must be learned in a marriage? I want you to turn with me, please, over to Titus, way back to the book of Titus and chapter 2. If you've never marked it in your Bible, mark it in your Bible. Wouldn't hurt at all. Titus chapter 2, and verse 2. It 
that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Tells a man that, man, he better, he better get it all together. Notice three and four. The aged women, likewise, that they be, the, be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, but to be responsible people, to love their husbands, to love their children. See, often when I counsel young people getting married, and I've had hundreds of weddings, and uh, I, I tell them that, that couple that I read about from the Orient, might have even been from Korea, I don't know, but um, a missionary went and was talking to them and found out that they, they were Christian people. And the missionary and his wife got acquainted, as you do with new friends in marriage. And uh, they, the, the missionary asked this Asian couple, how long have you been married? They said, 25 years. They said, wonderful. How did you meet? Well. Our parents decided long, long before that we were going to marry. And so we met on our wedding day. And of course, the, the Americans, the missionaries, they thought, how could this have happened, you see? Uh, well, it's a, it, or, and the, the, the Asian couple loved each other and been married for 25 years. It says, in order for marriage to be a success, you must work at it. I thought, how true. In order to grow in love deeper, it must be worked upon. Love has to be learned. Some women have to study hard <laughs> in order to learn how to love because their husbands can be quite unlovable at times. Of course, I'm not talking to any women here, but... but um, Someone said, in order for a, a marriage to a marriage relationship to be prosperous, there needs to be a lot of homework. Some time back, my wife found a, a poem. In fact, she, she was sitting right here where Dave and Bonnie are, and she read it on Mother's Day, and the place was full of folks. You know, I had over 2,700 funerals. And so many, 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 many of our couples got old and like we are now. Well, anyway, the poem goes like this. He criticized her pudding. He didn't like her cake. He wished she'd make biscuits like his mother used to bake. She didn't do the dishes right and she couldn't make a stew. She didn't mend his socks like his mother used to do. And then one day he started his whole rigmarole through. She turned and boxed his ears just like his mother used to do. <laughs> well, you, you see, the, the stick to itiveness, stick to itiveness. In other words, sticking together, <laughs> uh, or the, the commitment that your grandparents had when they said, until death we do part. That commitment is waning nowadays. You know, it's, it's sad what's happening to, to marriage in America. Um, today, it doesn't seem to work. Let's chuck it. We can always try again sometime. A couple came to me. My office was the office that Pastor Kim has now. They came to me one time and... They knew that I had married a lot of people in this, in this area. I didn't know them, but as soon as I talked to them, I wanted to find out if they were Christians. And they said, oh yes, we are Christians. We 
Uh, and I said, tell me about it. And he gave me a little testimony of some kind. And then in our conversation, the young lady told me, we have agreed that if our marriage doesn't work, we will get a divorce. And he was, sat, he was sitting there, and I saw his head go. I, in fact, I heard his head shaking up and down, you know. Um, it r was rattling. And I gave them the old California pleasantry. Have a nice day, folks. But go someplace else. You know, if the attitude is, well, if it doesn't work, we go. Let me give you some facts. Since 1920, the divorce rate in America has increased over 1,420% until the U.S., the, the, you know, we have the highest divorce rate of any industrialized nation. America does. Five out of six adults who are criminals in jail or in prison are from broken homes where their parents divorced somewhere along the way. Grandparents or some other relatives are now raising millions of American children because their parents gave up. When I was pastoring here, uh, it was a rarity to have a young couple come to me to get married if they were not already cohabitating, living together. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, one million people were in unmarried partner households in 1970. Doesn't seem like a long time ago to me, does to you perhaps. The number rose to 3.2 million in 20 years, 1990. In 2000, the figure soared to 11 million were in an unmarried partnership in America. Now it has gotten worse, people living without marriage. Living together is becoming a as trendy as fast foods and cell phones. Incidentally, older couples are keeping up with that, that pace also. Can't tell you how many people. When my wife and I were newlyweds, we were in, we were in a pastorate. We weren't in the pastorate, but we were in a church where the pastor was a wonderful man, he and his wife. His parents came to visit the church, and they were married over 50 years. And uh, one day, I, we went to church and found out that his mother and father got a divorce. Christian people. It is considered abnormal for people to be married for a long time today. Incidentally, on Saturday, my wife and I will have our 63rd wedding anniversary. That's a long time. But, you know, we, we had a couple in our, our church here that, of course, I had both their funerals years ago. Last name was Myrick. And... One Friday, I, I took Mrs. Myrick to visit him in the hospital. And um, her name was Leela, his was Artie. I gave him a haircut. I can't tell you how many guys I cut their hair before they died. But I gave him a haircut, and on July 10th that year was their anniversary.